Today I'm going to share a little about how children learn to think about shapes. Let's start by looking at some triangles. Which of these are triangles and how do you know? Surely that one is. We've all seen that. That's the triangle we've seen throughout school. But what about this that we might see on a slow moving vehicle? Or this weird slanted thing? Or how about this triangle with just a little piece missing? Or this tall pointy one? Or a yield sign? Or this triangle with just the tip cut off? Or a no passing zone sign? Which of these are triangles? How do you know? And then we might ask ourselves, well, what would a child say about these? How would a kid think about them? So from a mathematical perspective, just these three blue ones are triangles. They have um, sharp vertices. They don't have rounded corners like some of the signs. The signs, of course, in real life would also be three-dimensional, which makes them um, not a triangle, which is flat and two-dimensional. They don't have any holes or gaps in them, and they, don't have, um, they all only have three sides, unlike that one with the tip cut off. But a child might not think that way. Some children might say that these four green ones are triangles because they all look a lot like that equilateral triangle in the top left corner there. They all have that classic look, which they've seen over and over again in schools and in picture books and in things like that. Because young kids, when they're first thinking about triangles and, sh and shapes in general, is they're really just looking at the overall look or shape of the thing. So what does this mean? If we're talking, if we want kids to learn about shapes and their properties, which is in the curriculum, um, then I could just tell a child that a triangle has three sides. And in fact, many people do that. And kids can learn that and recite it back. But if I really want them to learn it in a way that means they understand the definition, that they've internalized it in their own thinking, then they need some different kinds of experiences. They need to see lots of examples and non-examples. So things like um, the triangle with just the tip cut off or shapes with four sides versus shapes with three sides. They need to spend time where they get to play with, sort, and especially talk about all these different kinds of shapes and how they're thinking about them. And then when they're starting to notice properties of the shapes, things like this number of sides, the number of corners, then they can start, then they're ready to learn a definition. Then they're mentally prepared to take in a more mathematical definition. And if we try to do it before that, they're not really ready to process that information. And so who cares? I will say that learning shape names and their properties may not be the most applicable life skill that kids get out of the um, math classroom, but it is in the curriculum and as long as it's there we should use it to teach mathematical reasoning. So we can teach the shapes and their names but we can also use it to teach reasoning. Um, and so that's thinking about why is the shape defined this way and what are the key features of that definition. Because thinking about properties, definitions, and their relationships is central to how mathematicians think and reason about the world. And while not everyone's going to grow up to be a mathematician, if we're going to have informed citizens, we need everyone to at least understand how mathematicians think, how they reach the kinds of conclusions they do, because math is an increasingly important part of our world. All right, thanks a lot. Please send me your math questions about this video or anything else at mathematfk at gmail.com or leave a comment on this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Math's not a problem with Mathy Math.